It's one of the pitfalls of being a professional athlete. Injuries. Pulled muscles, stretched ligaments, torn cartilage, you name it. The traditional treatment for most of these injuries has been an ice bag and plenty of rest. But in professional sports, time is money. And the quicker a highly paid athlete can get back to the playing field, the better. So now the traditional methods of recovery are being challenged by the chamber. Looks like something from a science fiction movie. But actually, I'm in the Toronto hospital and this is a hyperbaric chamber. They've been used since the turn of the century to treat divers suffering from decompression sickness. But they may soon revolutionize the way we treat injured athletes, because sitting in this chamber could cut the time an injury takes to heal in half. How, you ask? <sighs> Oxygen. You can think of the cells in your body as little fireplaces. The food you eat provides them with a source of energy, just like this wood. But you don't get any heat from wood until you burn it. And it's the same with your cells. They don't get any energy until they burn the food. But to burn the food, they need oxygen. And they get that oxygen from your blood. It's a great system until something goes wrong, like an injury. Whenever you tear muscles, break bones, or crush any of your limbs, you create a mini disaster area. If you could look inside an injury, you'd see it's a mess. Broken blood vessels, damaged tissues, and lots of leaking fluid, something we experience as swelling. To repair the damage, your cells need lots of oxygen. But all the excess fluid and debris around the injury makes it more difficult for the oxygen to reach the cells that need it. And that's what determines how fast an injury heals. How much oxygen is getting to the damaged area. So how can we get more oxygen to the areas that need it? Well, why not breathe more? Well, it turns out that even if I were to breathe pure oxygen instead of air, I would still only get a slight increase in the amount of oxygen getting to my tissues. Why? It has to do with pressure. When mountain climbers reach certain altitudes, they find it harder to breathe. The problem is that the air is getting thinner, which means there's less oxygen. But thinner air also means there's less air pressure on their bodies. And as the pressure drops, so does the amount of oxygen their blood can carry. Let me show you what I mean. You'll notice that there are no bubbles in this liquid. But this is carbonated water, and it's full of carbon dioxide gas. Now, the reason you can't see any bubbles is because this bottle has been pressurized. And in fact, it's the pressure of this pocket of air pushing down on the liquid that's holding the carbon dioxide gas in the water. But if I reduce the pressure of that air pocket by unscrewing the cap, watch what happens. The bubbles you see forming are bubbles of carbon dioxide gas leaving the liquid because the air pressure above the water has been reduced. At high altitudes, your blood has a similar problem. As the air pressure around you drops, your blood can't hold as much oxygen, which means you have to breathe harder and faster to stay alive. So what does all this have to do with the hyperbaric chamber and injuries? Well, I've been telling you about how your breathing is affected if the pressure around you drops. But what if it went the other way? What if the pressure around you was increased? Are you ready to pressurize? Okay, starting now. In the chamber, the pressure around you is increased to two or three times normal sea level pressure. And instead of regular air, pure oxygen is pumped into the chamber. By increasing the ambient pressure, the chamber allows your blood to hold more oxygen. 
To understand what's happening, let's go back to our pop bottle. If we could increase the pressure inside the bottle again, we could force the carbon dioxide gas back into the water. And that's exactly what happens in a hyperbaric chamber. It forces your blood to carry more oxygen. In fact, this system can allow your blood to carry up to 15 times more oxygen than normal. So how does that help heal an injury? Well, if there's more oxygen in your blood, then more oxygen will reach the cells in the injured area. And with more oxygen, your body can repair the damage a lot faster. So an injury that normally takes four to six weeks to heal might heal in two to three weeks if the athlete spends a couple hours a day in the chamber. Hmm. But why not spend a couple of days in the chamber and heal really fast? Well, it turns out you can get too much of a good thing. If you breathe too much oxygen under pressure, you can deplete some of the chemical transmitters in your brain. If you stay in too long, you can suffer an epileptic seizure. So you have to limit the amount of time you spend in the chamber. And speaking of time...